Welcome back fellow reading warriors. Today I'm going to do a video of a book haul of all the books I bought uh, this past summer. I haven't really bought any books near the beginning of the year like spring or early winter so it's going to be the first half of the year book haul but it mostly took place over this past summer. I have to warn you, this video may be long because I bought a lot of books. Over this past summer I've been working three jobs and uh, <laughs> I may have spent some of that money on books instead of saving all of it for my college education. Uh, don't worry, I still save some money. Some. But not a lot. But I'm very excited to read all of these books and to have them live on my bookshelf for hopefully a very long time. I don't think I'll be unhauling any of these. But you never know. So let's get started with this ginormous book haul before this video gets to be forever long. So first things first, I went to Barnes & Noble and got a ton of books. I got Treasure Island, that classic, um, by Robert Louis Stevenson. I got this one because it's, it's a literary classic and I love reading classics, but I also got it because I have uh, Mysterious Island by Jules Verne and Gulliver Travels. I actually have my grandfather's copy of Gulliver Tra Gulliver's Travels and I'm really honored to have that and and I think also Mysterious Island was one that we found in my grandparents basement so both of those are really old so I just thought I'd complete like that theme of the classic like Mystery Island um, theme so I got Treasure Island and I felt like I had to just for that. The next one I got, also a classic, was A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. Um, basically, Barnes & Noble was having a buy classics for $5 sale, and I couldn't resist. So I got A Tale of Two Cities. I haven't read it yet. I hope I enjoy it, but we'll see. But it's here. Next on the list, Anna Kareninov. I bought this, again, the classics deal going on at Barnes & Noble. But also, I had a friend who read it and really enjoyed it, and I'm also going to be a Russian minor um, at university, and one of the classes is like translating Tolstoy and reading Tolstoy and like r Russian authors and stuff. So I am predicting in my future I will need to have this book anyway for that class, so it's like an investment to one of my future classes um, because I'm a Russian minor. I don't know Russian, but I want to know Russian. So I'm trying, trying to read more Russian literature. And this, as, long as, as well as the book The Master and the Margarita, which I'm currently halfway through. And it's long. It's huge. It really is almost 800 pages. So this will be a lot of fun. It will take me forever to get through, but I acknowledge that fact from here on out. So the next book I got from Barnes & Noble is still a classic, but it wasn't buy one get one for $5 because I could have done it for buy one get one $5, but I saw another version of it with a much prettier cover. So I spent an extra $5 just for the prettier cover, and that is Dracula by Bram Stoker. Stoker. Um, when I was in fourth grade, I actually attempted to check out this book, and I started it, and I got like one chapter in before I decided to read other books and then it was due so I gave it back so I haven't actually read Dracula I have always wanted to read it and now I own a very beautiful cover of it and I hope to take this to college with me and read it in October maybe for a spookathon or just because Oct I am a huge fan of Halloween and therefore October I will be watching horror movies and reading thrillers and mysteries. It's like the only month that I actually watch horror movies. I enjoy them, but it really only exists in October for me at least. Um, so yes, I have this absolutely gorgeous cover of Dracula and I'm really excited. It even has a built-in bookmark, which is a lot of fun and honestly kind of feels like the Bible just with thicker pages. And of course the pages are black. So yes, yay. And then the next one, also a classic, so the first half is just classics, um, was Frankenstein 
I chose the colorful, or not the colorful, the pretty cover over the regular boring one. And so I bought Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. And again, read it during October. Wanted to read it earlier in life, but wasn't ready. But now I'm finally ready to embrace Frankenstein. Okay, so the next book and the last classic I got was Murder on the Orient Express, Agatha Christie. And I chose this because, again, it's a classic that I haven't read, and it has a beautiful cover, again. Also, I watched the Netflix movie uh, Murder Mystery with Adam Sandler and Jennifer Garner from Friends. Her. I really like her. And it kind of inspired me, like, oh, I need to read more Agatha Christie. And I was like, you know, I don't really read a lot of mystery, and I'll get into that later, but it, I just... I'm scared to read mysteries because I'm afraid that they're going to be really predictable and really easy and just a disappointment. But I was like, you know what, Agatha Christie is really famous for her mysteries, so why not buy one of her most well-known books and buy a pretty cover of it at that. And so I bought it, and again, I'm going to read it. I'm just preparing for October here, people. I am buying mystery and all that jazz, just ready for October. So I'm still at Barnes & Noble here, but I've moved out of the classic section. And to start that, I have The Candle and the Flame by Nafiza Azad. I really hope I said her name right, Nafiza Azad. Um, this book is about uh, jinn, which if you don't know what jinn are, it's essentially, it's genies, except jinn is the original name for it. So, genies come from, uh, like, a Middle East culture and mythology and tradition, uh, but in, like, Arabic and Farsi, they refer to them as jinn, and so that's their original name. So, this book takes place in Iran, and it's all about, like, the jinn and that magic, and I'm really excited to read it because I love reading about jinn and genie and that kind of magic like i loved to read about him when i was a kid i loved anything really middle eastern i think it's a beautiful culture that i des desperately need to learn more about and so i'm really excited to read this i know i won't be giving it back and i'm just so excited i think this is going to be like the first book i start as soon as i finish all the books on my tbr for this next coming month of august so, um, I'm just really excited, okay? You'll definitely be getting my thoughts on this when I finish. Uh, now this next one isn't a classic, but it's like based off of a classic, almost a retelling, and it's Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Menis de Kahlo. And I got this one because I like historical fiction a lot, but again, I don't read it as much. Like, I enjoy it. I have historical fiction books on my shelf, and I have read them, and I do enjoy them. I just don't know why I don't actively go out looking for new historical fiction. But I've been hearing people talk about this on BookTube a little bit, so I was like, this is perfect. It's historical fiction. It's kind of a murder mystery. Jack the Ripper. So again, October but really excited, and it's not too big, so it would be great for, like, Spookathon or any other readathons that this would qualify for. Um, so yeah, I got this one, and that will actually conclude my journey to Barnes & Noble. Yeah, that was all Barnes & Noble. <sighs> I'm gonna live a poor life, but rich in books. Moving on, I got... Sever, which is the third book in the Chemical Garden trilogy. It's by Lauren DeStefano. I have the first two books in the trilogy. That was a struggle. Uh, Wither and Fever. Um, but I actually got this at... I got this from Thrift Books. My thing is that I went to Schuler's and I found the first book, Wither, in the used section. And then a couple months later, I went to Schuler's again, and I got the second book, Fever, again in the, like, thrift books, like, secondhand loved section. And then I went back to Schuler's again, and I didn't find the third book, and I was like, ah, oh, so close, two out of three. Um, 
So I decided to take it into my own hands and go to Thrift Books and just get it there. So now I finally have the complete trilogy and I actually really enjoy this trilogy. This is one trilogy of very few books and book series that I will actually reread. I don't know what it is, but I have a thing about rereading books. I just don't do it. And I can explain all that in a different video if you guys want. So yeah, comment down below and let me know if you want me to make a video about uh, rereading books, what ones I like to, what ones I don't want to, and like, why. So yeah, third book, Chemical Garden Trilogy. Really good. Read it. So now moving on to the books I bought online. There are only a few that I bought online just because I don't like buying books online. The problem is, is that they're cheaper and I can buy find pretty much whatever book I want but I'm always just so scared about the condition it's gonna be in and I know you can buy like new books or like new or great but um, I don't know it just scares me uh, but I did buy some online and so these are those I bought The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern um, again, because I heard so much on booktube about how great this book was, lots of people reading it and loving it, or even reading it and just liking it. So I bought this in very good condition, but it's really wrinkly and has been well loved, in a way to put it. So I'm not super happy with how it came in the condition, and that is precisely why I'm afraid of buying books online. But I'm still okay with it because it's perfectly readable and legible. Like, it's just fine. Um, so I'm excited to read this just to understand what all the talk and hustle, hustle is about. Um, so yeah, that's the first one I bought online. And then the other one I bought online with it was The School for Good and Evil by Somam Chanani. And this actually appeared in my... One of my reading rush challenges, this was a book that I got off my shelf that I previously read that I had to draw a picture of a character of, and I had to actually draw this character. Um, and so, yeah, that was kind of a little spoiler, like, oh, I got this book, but yeah, I got it online, again, discount books, just like The Night Circus, and I have read it, and I do like it a lot, and I know there are more in the series, and I haven't read the others in the series yet, so I'm hoping to maybe reread this and then get the others in the series because I remember just really enjoying this book and absolutely loving it and so I should probably continue to read and enjoy these so I bought the first one just to kind of remind me of that plus it's just such a cool concept and again the cover so yeah now moving on uh my birthday was in this past May and I got one book for my birthday for my parents and I was really excited so what they did is they went to Barnes and Noble surprise surprise and they saw this on like um, the popular read shelf and they read it and they thought it would be great for me and that is Scythe now again booktubers have been reading this and commenting about it and really enjoying it and like there's a second book and I think the third book is coming out um, but I actually didn't know this was existed because by this time I hadn't really discovered booktube a whole lot. I know. <gasps> Where have I been all my life without it, right? But my parents got me this book and I'm really excited to read it. It's going to be right up my alley. Um, plus, it just looks so cool. And so because they got me this book, and this is actually going to be the first book I read as soon as I'm done with my current reads right now. So... Once I finish reading what I'm reading right now, this is going to be the next book that I read. And then because they got me this book, I went back to Barnes & Noble and I got the second one, Thunderheard, also by Neil Shusterman. Shusterman. Yep, I said that right, Shusterman. So I have this, I got it for my birthday, and then I bought this to go along with it because even though I haven't read this yet, I just knew I was going to love it. So I just bought the second one. And I will be buying the third one when it comes out, whether I read it or not. <laughs> Almost done, I promise. Next are the books I got from Schuler's, which is another bookstore that's very close to Barnes & Noble and, again, very close to where I live. So, and again, I took a booktuber's recommendation for this one. Uh, it's a contemporary novel, and I just 
don't read a lot of contemporary, which is very shocking because a lot of people on booktube do. I just happen to not, but I decided to give this one a chance and hopefully I can kind of transition to, I don't know, a phase or just start reading contemporary and see if I really do like it. So I got Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon. And yes, there is a movie coming out of The Sun is Also a Star, and it is the same author that wrote a Sun, The Sun is Also a Star. I have not read that one, but when I went to Schuler's and I saw this and The Sun is Also a Star, I read both descriptions of these, and I decided I liked the description of this one more. So if I read this and I enjoy it, maybe I'll buy The Sun is Also a Star, but I'm going to start with this just because it caught my eye and my heart slightly more. But I am very, I am excited to read it. It's going to be new and different for me, but that's kind of the exciting part about it. Um, so yeah, everything, everything. And then the next one that I got from Schuler's has been out for a very long time. It's one of those ones where it came out, it was really popular, and then I just decided not to read it. Or less of it, I decided not to read it and just didn't because I was reading my own books at the time. But yeah, so I bought this one used, but I bought it in store, and I love doing that, buying used books, but in store. And it is The Winner's Curse by Marie Rut Rutkowski. So by Marie Rutkowski, The Winner's Curse. I remember seeing this in the library and reading the description and being like, hmm, maybe I'll read it later. If I don't find any other books that I want to read more, I'll read this. Or if I have room in my list of books that I'm checking out from the library, then I'll get it and I'll read it. And I just was never motivated to read it, but it was always kind of there in the back of my head, so I was like... And then I went to Schuler's, and I saw this, and I was like, I'm gonna reread the description, and so I did, and I was like, I am so dumb! Like, why did I not ever check this book out from the library? So, instead of going to the library and checking it out and seeing if I actually do enjoy the book, I flat out bought it instead. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, I bought this book and I am excited to read it. I just hope I read it before I get in my head that I'm not going to like it. Even though there is no reason for me not to like it. But yeah, so I read that one. And then the very last book that I got in this entire book haul... Um, this past summer from Schuler's is one that I am not going to read But I bought it knowing that I was not going to read it or if I am going to read it I'm not going to read it Seriously, I'm going to skim read through it so I can say I read it, but it's not a super serious book for me now hold on a second because this book is the original screenplay to J.K. Rowling's Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Now do you understand why I say I'm not going to read this seriously, but I still had to buy it? Because I have every single book in the Harry Potter universe. I don't have every single one of J.K. Rowling's books because I know she has some other like young adult books that aren't even close to the Harry Potter universe. Um, I don't have those, but I have every single Harry Potter book. As you can see, Harry Potter, Cursed Child, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them original screenplay, as well as Tales of Beetle the Bard, and the Quidditch throughout the ages, and the actual little tiny textbooks Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, that, that's the textbook, that's the book that Newt wrote. So I have all of those, and so even though I did not like the movie all that much, even though I wasn't super excited about reading the story, I still had to buy it so that I could have every single Harry Potter book, and again, it's a pretty cover. I don't buy books based on their cover, I do buy them based on the descriptions, but if a book has an okay description but a pretty cover, I'm probably going to buy it anyway. And that's exactly what this book was, it was an okay story. I have every other book in the universe, and it has a pretty cover, so I bought it. So it will be joining the Harry Potter section on my shelf as soon as I figure out some room for it, because as you can see, I have some other series. I have the Divergent series and the Selection series, um, and it fits on my shelf perfectly, but in order to get this to fit somewhere, 
I need to remove one of those and replace it with other books. So I gotta figure that out. But yes, that is the end of my book haul of the first half of the year, but really like May through July. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will be hopefully reading all of these books within the next um, year-ish, maybe like fall, winter. I can hopefully get them done, maybe until spring, but I know that there are other books that I'll be checking out from the library and reading, so we'll just see how it goes. And there are still books on my shelf that I want to read and haven't read, so I really should not have gone out and bought so many books because there are so many books that I own that I haven't read yet. But my upcoming TBRs are going to be all books that I own that I haven't read and think I'll like still. Um, but yeah, so thank you for sticking with me through this haul video. In total, I got... In total, I got 15 books. Oh, 16. I forgot about this one because it's not my stack. 16 books. A lot of them were like thrift books or secondhand, so it wasn't that expensive. Thank goodness. But, or a lot of them were on deals too. But yeah, so this is probably going to be the biggest haul I have and hopefully the only haul of the year just because there are so many books on my shelf. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to take them all with me to college, so I'm hoping that when I come home for Thanksgiving or winter break, I can substitute ones that I took and read for ones that I haven't. So, thank you for staying with me. If you liked this video or want to see more like it, feel free to actually give the video a thumbs up, comment down below telling me what you liked, what you didn't like, or if you have video ideas. Or if you read some of the books and want to have a little book discussion, tell me about it, what you liked, what you didn't like about the books. Um, subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and others, and I have a lot of fun videos planned for you guys. Um, and make sure to hit the bell so that you get the notification so you don't miss when I upload. And so when you're on YouTube and you're like, gee, she hasn't uploaded in a while, I better check her channel. And then it's like, oh my word, she actually has been uploading every Thursday. Yeah, so hit the bell so you don't have one of those and you get overwhelmed with like a bunch of videos. And like I said, I hope to be uploading around every Thursday, every Friday, just depending on my schedule because it, I am very busy at the moment actually trying to pack up my room and putting books and other things into boxes and moving to college in two weeks. So yes, thank you so much for staying. Bye and happy reading everyone.